everyone. I'm Evan from First Updates Now, and I am here with Team 4795, the eSpots. We are going to be taking a look at their intake, their elevator wrist mechanism, and then their landing gear as well, coming up on behind the bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Pass it first to you, Lucent, to give an overview of the intake and how that works. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, for our intake, if we can just do a ground intake really quick. Um, so you can see we have a, a little horizontal roller claw here uh, with these nitrile flappers. So that intakes the cube like that. And then we can go into a uh, cube outtaking mode. So this is our mid mode and then we have a high mode additionally for cubes. Um, and so that just outtakes like this. There we go. Um, and then we can also do cones. And you, you'll note that as Aaron will talk about in a little bit, uh, do I have the cone? Um, so can we go cone ground intake? So as Andrea will note in a little bit, um, or as Aaron will note in a little bit, we have uh, LEDs indicating our state. So we pinch the cones between these rear two rollers. The entire intake itself is on these dead axle setups. So the axle actually doesn't spin. We have a bolt in here. And this bolt, uh, the bearings are inside of the pulleys, which are printed. Uh, and these rev traction wheels, um, these rev compliant wheels are press fitted on. And so these just spin freely without the um, without the live axle spinning. And that has a lot of structure and rigidity of the intake. Um, so we've done a lot of iteration with our end effector mechanisms. We have a previous end effector, um, which we call the over the top design. So we tested that a little bit and decided this one was a little better. Wesley, can you give us a little bit more about how the shoulder and how that whole linkage design works? Yes, definitely. Um, one thing we really want to focus on this year is to be really comfortable with doing iterations. So we want to be, to be able to do iteration on this, take this off, fix this, and do improvements uh, very easily. Uh, could you put this in a middle score? So, uh, the way the arm tube is attached to uh, the sh shoulder plate is uh, the clamps and two bolts locking in place. So you only need to take like I would say six bolts out and you can take the whole arm tube off and then like swamp another set on uh, later. And also um, the shoulder design, because normally there's a through shaft going through the uprights all the way, but this makes it really hard to take off. So as you can see over here, the tube, the shaft is actually not going into the upright. Uh, so you can actually, uh, lo by loosening those clamps and the cam tensioner, you can move the whole shoulder up and down along the uprights uh, for design changes and chain tensioning. Uh, we have two motors driven the arm on the bottom and the shaft are connected, so they're always in sync, which is good. Um, and also, because our intake position is here, our stowing position is here, so we want to be really comfortable with moving our arm back and forth throughout the mesh. Uh, so we have this counterbalance system over here. This is a constant force spring. Uh, and a dynamo rope, a dynamo rope pulling up to the top. So as the arm moves, uh, the distance between the force and the pivot is proportional on both sides. So uh, it gives you like, um, if you get the radius and the force correct, it can actually just, programming people do not need to worry about gravity anymore. This is um, just make uh, life easier and also make the robot mechanically more um, effective. All right, thank you. It's really interesting to see teams embracing the use of 3D printing and everything else to make designs more repairable and modularity. So I will pass it over to Andrea to talk more about the landing gear. Yeah, so um, the landing gear is basically uh, these two uh, Omni wheels that we have in the middle of our chassis. Um, and they're connected to a pneumatic cylinder. And this pneumatic cylinder actually is to um, drop the wheels down so that they're on the same level as our Omni wheels. And um, you can see them actually right here. 
Uh, and this is basically to help us uh, balance on the station with like two other robots so that we can overhang on the station and not like drop down. Uh, and some other things about our drive base, we have, uh, we ran Swerve for the first time this year, we chose Max Swerve, um, it came out new this year, and we had a couple of problems with it, uh, with the wheels delaminating, de which we know like other teams have problems with as well, so we, what we decided to do was um, put these self-tapping screws into it, and that really helped, we didn't have any wheels delaminated after that. So we would recommend that to other teams as well. So this year we are using a, a half-inch steel belly pan. Um, if <laughs> you look right there, um, for mounting almost all of our electronics. So we incorporated the design of the steel belly pan from the very start of the season because we wanted our electronics, especially since this is our first year using Swerve, we wanted it all to be robust. And we actually haven't. Um, haven't pre-drilled any holes for mounting because they're all incorporated into this custom steel belly pan. We also have a horizontal mounting for the first time for our battery that's pocketed and also custom made. So this way, um, first of all, it helps with our water management and we also have an inverted PDH design. Um, so that way we can just easily tip the robot over and uh, all the wires are traced through a spreadsheet and everything. Uh, so this helps us, one, to conserve space, so we have both the Rio and the uh, PDH on this piece of polycarb, and it also makes everything a lot more compact and traceable. It's really awesome to see like the more increased accessibility and teams putting that into, the, into their design of the robot initially. So let me pass it over to Aaron to talk about the controls. Yeah, so this year we're using a state machine to control how our uh, controls go to the state. So uh, let's outtake real quick. So right now we can control our uh, uh, change cube and code mode with our two bumpers here. So this is cube mode and this is code mode. You can see how this changes uh, the intake speed as well as uh, the uh, vision line pipeline. Uh, we're using photon vision with and their LED color. We can also change state with our uh, code driver D-pad buttons. It's really awesome to see more teams focusing on the increased like ability of controls to do more advanced mechanics and other stuff. So thank you again. I wish you a great competition and great luck out on the field. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charge Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, analysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.